Hi there, it's Carolina Lead from Nightside. Just want to check in with you to see what it is that you're doing right now to prepare your family, your friends for Irma. If you live in the Tampa Bay area or outside of this area, I have family in South Florida. So, of course, many of us are not only thinking about um, our immediate families, but of course, our loved ones who live in uh, different parts of the state and possibly outside of the state looking at uh, the track, but uh, definitely want to chat with you. This morning, I can tell you, I woke up to quite a surprise. Hi there, Gloria. Uh, I live in Pinellas County, and uh, we are, at least my area, um, uh, level A, we are under a mandatory evacuation, which caught me a little bit by surprise, given the forecast and given the information that we have uh, thus far. But again, uh, thankfully, we are prepared. Um, as I've mentioned, for those of you who've been on Facebook Live with me before, uh, I have two young children, a three-year-old and a one-year-old, so early on in the season, I made sure to have everything that we needed, but uh, at this point, and obviously have a plan, but at this point, we uh, are going to have to evacuate uh, pretty soon. Uh, and we also have a dog, which complicates the issue. So wanted to check in with you because, um, you know, by sharing information with one another, uh, oftentimes it might be something you didn't think about. It might be something that really helps you uh, prepare or, or get out of a situation that may be an issue. Uh, as speaking about Pinellas County, when we're looking at level A, we're talking about coastal communities and we're speak, talking about people who live in, in mobile home parks or, or modular homes uh, who are vulnerable, obviously, to the wind and uh, the storm surge. That could be a, a, an issue, obviously, for this area. Um, that starts at 6 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, a woman that um, that I know who lives near me uh, told me that, that that she lives in a, a mobile home park. So her plan uh, for the first time in for living here for for quite some time, she told me four or five years, is that she's going to stay with a friend. It's not even worth taking the chance. So um, you know, I'm thankful that that that's what she's going to do. It's an elderly woman that I know, um, but at this point. Um, What's scary for a lot of people is, you know, trying to decide where it is that you're going to go. Uh, tonight I looked, because I've been looking for hotels for days now, I did look on, a, on multiple websites and found that there are really not many available in, in the immediate area within 10 to 15 miles. So uh, luckily we have family in the area, but it's uh, obviously a consideration. No voice? Anne, can you not hear me? Let me know uh, if you cannot hear me, because then I'd have to start over, but it looks like you are because I see some comments here. Um, one thing that I found uh, as a great resource and shameless plug is our website, WTSP.com. Right there we have um, obviously all the school closures, uh, all the, the area shelters, uh, a lot of great information there and information that will lead you from our website to the area county websites that can help you, whether it be phone numbers, um, you know, website information, forms that you might need, good reminders, and that's been really helpful for myself as well. And I've uh, been through many hurricanes. I'm from Florida, so uh, as much as I think that I'm prepared and I know everything, which I don't, uh, it's been very helpful to see, uh, to read that information. One thing that I saw tonight that I think is helpful if you do plan on going to a shelter, uh, things to remember, things to remember to bring with you if you need to go to a shelter. Um, you know, bring your own supplies, pack enough for three days. Okay, you can hear me, great, thank you, I just wanna make sure. Um, remember your medication, if you have a pet, Remember to bring, you know, food and water and, and, and whatever supplies you need for that pet. Things like a, a weather radio, you know, battery operated, flashlight and batteries. Things that, like, I will tell you I have in my home, but might forget to pack in my car if I'm on my way to a shelter. So it's helpful. Just remember that these shelters basically provide basic um, basic meals, basic needs, but like when it comes to like a cot, an inflatable mattress, you do need to bring that. Um, with you uh, in order to ride out the storm. Basically, this is a safe structure. If you go to a shelter, it's a, a safe place for you to ride out the storm. So no cots, no blankets, uh, those sort of things you need to bring yourself. Also, an important point, uh, the shelters will remain open after the storm, and that's because there may be people in that shelter who lose their home or who have significant, dam significant damage to their home and therefore need to stay in the shelter 
for a little bit longer or need the aid of county officials and county uh, workers to help them come up with accommodations. So um, that's an important point because a lot of times you think, oh, once the storm has passed, those shelters are closed. But, uh, but no, not at all. The county is well aware that there are people that are going to continue to need their assistance. Another thing that I learned today in our editorial meeting, uh, which is helpful, a lot of times I've done it through like my Nextdoor app or um, Facebook pages that are from your neighborhood, but you know, if you're looking for gas, there are multiple websites you can use, like Gas Buddy, um, that can help you uh, find out before you go to that gas station if gas is available, and of course you can call ahead. And the other thing that I think is really important, especially since we're seeing uh, mandatory evacuations out of Miami-Dade County, 650,000 people under a mandatory evacuation. You gotta consider, you have that massive group of people getting on the highways that in some cases some are coming up i-75 and coming through this area through tampa bay so you you need to be prepared to uh possibly if you can avoid some of that traffic so ways the fhp map is live so it actually shows you what traffic is looking like on different roads so you might avoid you know 75 and take 19 or use i've used um us 27 to cut through the heart of florida in order to avoid the turnpike um, in order to get from my family in South Florida to Orlando or Gainesville, even Tallahassee, I've been able to cut through. So uh, these are things that can be helpful because when you look at that, you can see on the map the red areas that are um, really just difficult to get through and that's helpful as well. But again, as I mentioned, WTSP, our, our website has been helpful and we have traffic reporters here who are, are of course helping out with that information as well. If you'd like to come on over, hello. Hi there. Oops. I'm just chatting with uh, people. We're talking about the traffic Hi. Yeah, so that I just we're took seeing. A look. Um, see? You know, we're still seeing those delays on 75 as you're approaching the turnpike. But if you're looking at 75, like through Sarasota, Manatee Counties, Hillsborough County, it's not that bad right now. It's once okay. you hit that, get close to the turnpike, that's Badgers. when you're going to see the delays and all the way north of there. It's going to be slow until you get north of I-10. It seems like a lot Got of people it. are heading into like the areas of Georgia mm -hmm. to get away. So um, plan for extra time, expect to be delayed. Expect exactly. to encounter traffic if you plan to evacuate and to leave far. Right. I was telling um, our friends here on Facebook that uh, I live in Pinellas County and I'm in yeah. an area that is a mandatory evacuation. Yeah. And, I, and I saw it this morning, I was shocked. I said, oh my goodness, wow, we're already being you know, evacuated. But then when you start looking into why, you're getting ahead of it. When you yeah. look at all the people out of South Florida mm -hmm. trying to get out of the area, yes. it's helpful to get ahead yeah. of it. And that's so. what you're, that's why we're seeing so much of that traffic because it's the turnpike, all those people coming mm -hmm. from 95 in the turnpike and then trying to get north. And I think the key thing here is to be patient. Yeah. And, you know, I think Governor Scott said it best, and I apologize, I just came in for the rain. It's pouring outside <laughs> here. No, but thank you. Are. It's, it's um, great information to share with everyone. Yeah, but, you know, Governor Scott, said, it was great what he said earlier in one of the news briefings, just that, you know, you need to be patient. These evacuations are not meant to be convenient. It's right. meant to keep you safe. So you need to be patient. You need to plan your route ahead of time. There are a lot, technology is on our side. And use I mentioned that, apps. yes. Use Google Maps, use Waze, use our apps. There I saw so FHP much, so has like FHP, a live map, Florida right? Florida 511 is excellent. And all of these tools are what we use as well that all kind of goes into our traffic uh, computers and information. So use technology to just figure out where you need to go. Cause it's gonna tell you where you need to be. Of course. And I just checked now on ways out of curiosity and it did put, put me on two set route, on I-75. It did, okay. Just out of curiosity. It's like if I was I remember, leaving now from Tampa to, to Valdosta, right. and it would take less than four hours, oh, which is not, that's not, not bad unreasonable. All. Right, right. Considering that mm -hmm. so many people are leaving the and, state. Yeah, and that's another key, just leaving late at night or really early in the morning before the masses leave. Right, not getting on the road yeah. at 9 or 10 a.m. Yeah. if you can, and it's mm -hmm. safe for your family to, yeah. pos to consider leaving at midnight, for example. And get plenty of sleep because driving yeah, while tired that's is what just I was as bad thinking. as driving it under the influence. So, right. As I was suggesting that, I was thinking yeah. that too, if you're mm -hmm. physically up for doing that and you, you're well rested, yeah. it's, it's something to consider Maybe to force some of the traffic. Maybe kids in the car too, if they can right. still be sleeping, you don't yeah. have to worry about having 
them just get restless while you're stuck in traffic. But of course. Yeah, it's just that area of I-75 and a turnpike where we're right. still seeing that slowdown because we have those masses of people coming from South Florida and then from this area too. So. And I think of some of the cut-throughs. I remember when I attended uh, the University of Florida, sometimes mm -hmm. I would use 27 yep. instead of the turnpike. Mm -hmm. And then as you go through Gainesville, what is it, 301? So yeah. there are like other options. And so that's, that's why those yeah. apps are helpful. You might say, mm -hmm. okay, I'll avoid the turnpike or 75 or 95 yeah, and take use... all these. Right. And you know, I went to Florida State from Tampa, mm -hmm. so, so you know. I would always took 19 and 98 oh, yeah. to get around. I would never take I-75 to I-10. So, right, because you're doing that yeah, loop. Cause, yeah, I mean, you have to obviously, you're driving a slower speed, mm -hmm. but it's just a little less chaotic, right. I guess you can say, Yeah. Uh, than driving on the interstate. Which, right. you know. And the nice thing about using those routes, I mean, and maybe not in particular in this case, but uh, then you have gas stations on your way. Yes. So if, you know, if you and need to stop, it's, you have a, a little bit of a, an easier opportunity yeah. to do so. And I spoke with the Florida Petroleum Marketers Association just to find out a little bit more about what their gas station owners are doing throughout the state. And yes, things are tight. They are working to try to get fuel to all of these gas stations. They're getting police escorts, the fuel tankers are, okay. to the gas stations along those evacuation routes so that way they can get through traffic. We forget that so many times. They have to get yeah, through traffic to get exactly. to the gas station. Yeah. And you know, another good point too was, you know, there were all these, you know, okay, there was a law that was passed that gas stations have to have generators yes. to make sure that they can stay open. But, you know, they brought up a point of, at some point, these gas station owners and employees are going to have to leave when the weather starts to get bad. Right. So the state will be, pro law enforcement will be providing police escorts for those employees to once it starts get getting to the point to where shelter. they need to leave so they can get to a point of safety. So, so much to consider. There is a lot to consider and I think paying attention to the forecast and you know, sometimes the best thing is to just stay put and stay home even after the storm because a lot of accidents and crashes can happen after the fact. There could be street flooding, so they, as we always say, turn around, don't drown. Right. And, um, you know, just and, use technology. And We're I've covered so, so many nowadays. hurricanes where people who really did not need to be out, they just want to look. Yeah. It's just don't do it. Yeah, it's not don't. worth it. Don't stay get in the put. way of those first responders yeah, as well. Yeah, plan to stay put. Let them do their jobs. It's for your safety too, and just, uh, just stay put, hunker down for a little bit, and yeah. So we have, we'll have more advice, and you know, we'll of course, and we're kind of early on. We have a, yeah. yeah, and you know, Hillary's going to be back here in the morning with great advice as well. But some just a heads up if you are leaving tonight, some of the routes that look pretty good, you know, US 19 isn't too bad. You're going to see some pockets of slowdowns. Of and of course, the Sun Coast Parkway has been pretty much in the green all evening. We did see a bit of a slowdown northbound earlier, but not okay. that bad right now. Good to know. To head north. So, and then again, 75, you're going to get that slowdown as soon as you hit the turnpike. And we have heard a lot of people say, oh my gosh, it's really slow once you hit that area. So just yeah. be patient. Right. And pack food and water mm -hmm. enough for everybody in the car. Of that course. was a really good tip from FHP because you don't want to have to stop if you're already in traffic, so just make sure that you have enough to get through your drive and your commute. Right, that you don't have to stop, like a yeah. pit stop. Mm, good, yeah. good point. So, All right. Well, Thank everybody you. be safe. I'm thinking about you. I know you, you know, having covered hurricanes Thank you for the past week, know. too. I know right. I was there in the aftermath of Charlie and, you oh, know, yeah, being from Florida. Orlando, and being from, yeah, so it's just, I remember covering in Kissimmee and then going down to Punta Gorda, which was an area oh, yes. I covered as well when I worked as a reporter in Sarasota. So we can see the devastating impacts that can happen. So just to look out for each other. Absolutely. You know, we're neighbors, we're, we're all family, we're Florida strong. I'm seeing that hashtag a lot lately and I'm loving it. And just be and there for As you remember, I mean, with Charlie, I remember as a reporter in Orlando, mm -hmm. we did not expect that no. to come our it, way exactly and, and it was I look back and it's such a good reminder of mm -hmm. that's why you're told by meteorologist Bobby yes. Deskins and so many others mm -hmm. that June 1st I believe it is I have yeah. this ready be prepared be ready and I you know I'm always shocked and I maybe you can say this too about mm -hmm. how many maybe because we were in the business we had been through a storm before but we were right. ready but so many people that aren't prepared yeah and I'm, I'm so glad to see that people are rushing out and the, the water situation there is a there's tap water at home. It's okay to drink tap water for a few days if you have to. Oh, yeah, so store to that. Like yeah. don't freak out driving all over town trying to get water. Store your tap water right. and just make yeah. sure you're cleaning the containers you're putting the water in. Obviously, but right. that's just one thing that talking to a lot of people where it's yeah. like. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I've, but, I have neglected some of the comments here as yeah, we're trying to get that so information out. Let's anything. see. Um, 
Oh, it goes pretty far back. Oh yeah, talking about the, uh, let's see, Ellis talks about, um, if you live in Pinellas County, there's an interactive mm -hmm. telephone number, yes, okay, that's, thank you yeah, for passing along. there are so along. many resources out there available that even 10 years ago, we didn't have, and the, just the technology, I think, the phones and the apps we have to help us get to a point of safety. Of course, yeah. In a, in a simple, and not Sorry, really simple way, but. scroll back here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gainesville Gain by 75. Yeah, my sister was driving through that. She lives in Gainesville mm -hmm. and was trying to get between Ocala and Gainesville and said traffic was a mess. So again, Yikes. once you hit the, where the junction is with the turnpike and you're heading north, it's going to be slow and it's going to be bad until you get north of I-10. And then again, through Georgia, I'm also seeing slowdowns in that area. So. And of course, the fear for drivers is running out of gas. So, yeah. you know, that's, and, you know, I don't know if we scary. went over this and you know we've Good. talked about it so many times, but the key, and Bobby Deskins has been saying this, Governor Scott has said it, FHP said that, told me this earlier today, where they say evacuate tens of miles, not hundreds of miles. Yes, yes. Bobby reminded yes. me of that as well. Yeah, so if you have to stay in a shelter for a few days, then so be it. Be uncomfortable mm -hmm. for a few days. Just rather than trying to make rather that Rather than trying to have to get through all that traffic. Right. And it's, sometimes it's just easier to be close to home, too. Yeah. But call some of those friends inland, friends and family. Yeah. They have couches, hopefully. And then, available. Uh, just uh, yeah. go over a couple questions. Yeah, so but Pat's Don, yeah nurse. you're right. Gainesville by 75. Yeah. Tough. The nurse required to stay. Yeah, as all the media, you guys are all going to be here working. Right. And nurses, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And law enforcement, a lot of extra law enforcement on the road, even the short drive here. I saw FHP on the road. So okay. they are looking out for you. The counties, the cities, FHP, making sure that traffic is going to continue to move. Uh, this is a good point, Allison brings up a contra flow. I heard our assignment desk talking about also yes. using yes. the shoulder of the highway to get this yes. traffic moving. And I have heard in some parts of Florida that they are doing that. They are, are putting traffic on the shoulders of the roads. Right. So I heard Georgia is also doing some contra flow. Yeah. So um, that's helpful. Just read a couple more comments. Uh, no aliens are not abducted. No, Donna's oh, responding to someone. Yeah, it is nice. A little bit of, of a sense of humor, I guess, because there is a lot of tension. People are scared. People are rattled. Mm -hmm. They're tense, and many people have not been through this before. Yeah, Heather's asking why mm -hmm. they're not doing contraflow on seventy-five. And I guarantee that the law enforcement, they were looking at that and right. the Department of Transportation. And when they see that we're ready for that in our area, that they they'll, will make, they'll make that call. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. The governor mm -hmm. did bring that up in the press conference I saw earlier tonight that um, he told these the hotels to accept mm -hmm. pets. Yeah. If you're, even if you're not pet friendly, look, or in an emergency situation. Yeah. So uh, make that uh, available to people who need it. So Absolutely. that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, 95 looks better. So it's a lot of what you what you've mentioned. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, especially in South Florida, have left already. So hopefully by tomorrow it won't be as bad if you decide to right. leave. I mean, and seeing that traffic, I was looking at some of the network yeah, video I mean, of I the heard traffic. 18 hours for some people. I have a lot of friends and family in that area. Many of them have chosen to go ahead and stay. Right. And just My hopefully that we can keep well, in yeah. touch. Yeah. And, and hopefully the family that we had talked to. Oh, yeah. The other night in St. Thomas, I know they got hit pretty hard, so they're, I know changing yeah, I, the subject. And, yeah, no, I checked in with her, yeah. and they're they're doing great, they're yeah. fine, and wow. um, so I'm really thankful that, yeah. that that we're able to, but as a mom, she was, I could see it in her face how yeah, nervous she how was. Terrifying I don't she blame was. her when yeah. you see a Cat 5 coming your way mm -hmm. and you're on an island. And there's no um, way out. Right, so, at right. At least here in this situation, you have a way out, and the decision is up to you. It's a personal decision with you and your family on what you're going to do, and and we're here to provide the information so you can make that decision. Yeah. Um, all right. So, so right. we'll continue. Thank you so much. I'll blow, blow out my hair a little bit. <laughs> really rainy out. Or Did rain it? It was really coming down. Yeah, okay. quite a lightning show. So all right. be safe out there. Thank you. I'll see you at 11. All right. So I'm going to wrap this up because, oops, my co anchor, uh, Katie McCall, is going to do uh, another Facebook Live on, uh, I believe, um, you know, some of the, those who are. Uh, elderly and, and special needs in our area and what it is that they need to do to prepare so um, I'm gonna read one more comment to see Cecilia I'm so scared and with these models that are changing every day it's so hard to know uh, where it's going and I don't have a lot of money uh, and that's that's the key point it's so easy to tell people you know leave and go to a hotel or do this and that you know what for a lot of you know 
costs money to do these things. Get into a hotel and put, you know, uh, gas in your car and get the supplies. I get it. So, um, I wish you all the best. If I can help you with anything, send me a message. So, I'm going to continue working towards the 11 o'clock. I thank you so much for joining our conversation. I'm glad we were able to talk about the traffic in our area, um, and I hope that it's helpful. But again, we're going to continue doing these Facebook Lives. Our, our meteorologists will continue to update you here on Facebook, and every time we get an update on the models, 10 minutes before those come out, they are updating you um, live on Facebook and then of course going into the information that we get. So I just want to thank you for your time and I will continue to see you throughout the weekend. I'm working all weekend long to help provide you the information. Alright, have a good night.